we are discussing the topic of concurrency control and there we have seen that our objective are twofold mainly to maintain concurrency and to enhance to enhance concurrency and to maintain consistency during concurrent executions and these two objectives are quite uh, non commensurate in the sense that if you try to maximum maximize concurrency then you will lead to more and more problems of inconsistency and if you try to save inconsistency as much as possible you end up in having more and more serial uh, execution so our objectives are quite non commensurate and often conflicting and we are trying to achieve trying to find ways and means to achieve both of them and in among these two the problem of consistency is foremost because that is uh, dealing with correctness and this problem of enhanced concurrency is secondary but it's a very important objective because it increases the throughput of the system and the whole issue of controlling and consistency came up due to concurrency itself and while tackling the topic we found out that one of the ways in which we can have concurrency and consistency is the concept of serializability serializability is not serial execution but it is find determining that a concurrent schedule is equivalent to some serial schedule and detection of serializability and maintaining serializable schedules is what we try to achieve in concurrency control two ways in which two of the major techniques which are followed for doing this are the locking protocols and the serializable or the system defined time stamping protocols we have seen the two phase locking protocol and we have seen that if we can maintain a data dependency properly then we can have a two phase protocol which is conflict serializable and deadlock free similarly in time stamping protocols we have found out the rules by which we can have uh, both conflict serializability as well as deadlock free schedules the next approach after having consistency is to enhance the concurrency as far as possible in order to do that we saw the thomas's right rule in time stamping protocols by which we could increase the concurrency in the case of locking mechanisms in the previous lecture we have seen the issue of multiple granularity where the database is broken up into a number of uh, in into a hierarchical style where the database is broken up into regions and regions are broken up into files and then files are broken up into records and if you lock and unlock them in a proper protocol which we call the multiple granular protocol then uh, in a two phase manner then we can ensure that uh, we are saving a lot of time over locking and unlocking and we can quickly lock and unlock various portions of the database in the time stamping protocols there are two difficulties one of the major difficulties we have noticed in the previous day is the question of rolling back that is once a transaction is rejected in its partial state it has to be rolled back and this rolling back causes a lot of problems because those transactions which have read or written data which is dependent on the transaction which is rolled back will also have to roll back and this leads to cascaded rollbacks and we will have to find out ways and means to avoid as much as possible rollbacks and then and as much as possible cascaded rollbacks so in order to do that we will see what are called multi version schemes and we will see a validation technique with a delayed write which tries to prevent rollbacks as much as and rejection as much as possible so we'll discuss those schemes now <coughs> a multi version scheme now previously with every data item we had only the data item and its current value but now in a multi version scheme we will have various versions of the data that is we will have instances or actual values of the data at various logical instances of time now let us see what we mean by that with each data item queue a sequence of versions of that data 
q1 q2 dot dot qm where qm is the latest version is stored q1 is the first version and then when another write occurs q2 is formed when a third write occurs by another transaction q3 is formed when a fourth write occurs q4 is formed and so on and we keep all the versions available each version of qk contains three fields previously each data item had its content the write timestamp and the read timestamp now each version will have the content of that version the write time w timestamp of that version and the r timestamp of that version what is the content the content is the value of the version qk the w timestamp of qk is the value of that transaction which created qk that is suppose a transaction wants to write the data value q whenever a write occurs a new version qk is created suppose there are k versions then the k plus 1th version will be created and the timestamp of that k plus 1th version will be the ts value of uh, the transaction which created that is the start value the start timestamp of the transaction which created this new version what is the r timestamp of qk now among the transactions which will read qk it is the normal r timestamp value it denotes the largest ts value of any transaction that successfully read qk so whenever a transaction reads this qk it may read q1 but then q2 r timestamp of q2 will not be modified now when will it read q1 that is the question which we will answer next that is suppose a particular transaction issues a read which version will it read so now we will come to the protocol the multi version protocol is as follows let qk denote the version whose w timestamp is the largest timestamp less than tsti so there is a transaction ti so let us say we have got q1 q2 q3 qk qm each of them have got a w timestamp and an r timestamp now for every transaction ti we have a tsti value now this tsti value the w timestamp value of q3 may be greater than tsti but the w timestamp of q2 will may be less than tsti and therefore the w timestamp of q1 will be less than the tsti because these queues are created by sequential writes if this one is written first then this timestamp is given this version is created when another write occurs this version is created when another write occurs so now we may have the w tsti may be less than w timestamp of q3 and w timestamp of of q2 then for ti q2 will be the version which will be read because in the sequential order the transaction the q2 is that transaction the w timestamp of q2 will be written by some transaction tj if this w timestamp of q2 will correspond to some ts of tj if tsti is less than tstj that means tj started before ti and if this timestamp is due to less some tstp then tp must have started after ti so for transaction ti we will see in order to maintain conflict serializability we will not we, we will not allow ti to read the the data version q3 we can allow ti to read any version from q1 to q1 or q2 
and in order to maintain conflict serializability we will read q2. That is what is meant by the largest timestamp which is less than TSTI. Suppose QK is the largest timestamp that is if this is QK plus 1 and this is QK then QK is the largest timestamp which is less than TSTI. So for any transaction TI the version which we will choose the version QK which will be considered for a transaction TI is defined by its timestamp such that the W timestamp of QK is the largest timestamp among the versions which is less than TSTI. Now if TI issues a read Q it will not issue read QK or QK plus 1 it will issue a read Q in the transaction then the value that is returned is the content of the version QK. This will help it to maintain the conflict serializability function. That is it will read that version which has been written by the transaction which uh, started before it. So there is no question of rolling back on a read. On a read it will always successfully be able to read something. In a multi version scheme there is no rollback on a read. Whenever you give a read there will be version which will be read. Now what happens if T issues a write queue? Then we will check if TSTI is less than R timestamp QK then TI is rolled back. Let us try and understand this. We have got Q1, Q2, QK minus 1, QK, QK plus 1 and QM. Let these be the current versions which are available. <coughs> now TI issues a read. Now QK is such that W timestamp of QK is less than TSTI and W timestamp of QK plus 1 is greater than TSTI. That means that the transaction which wrote QK plus 1 started after TI and the transaction which wrote QK minus 1 or QK started before TI. <coughs> so we will read from QK to maintain conflict serializability. But what about write? That is TI gives a write. Once TI gives a write, we will check this QK we will check the R timestamp of QK. <laughs> and see how it compares with TSTI. <coughs> if TSTI is greater than the R timestamp of QK then it is fine because nobody else which started after TI has yet read QK. But if we have this situation, then it means that there is a process which started after TI but has read QK. So a process or a transaction started after TI, a transaction say TJ started after TI but read QK. So if that transaction has read QK and now we are trying to write on QK a, a new version 
then we lose on serializability because if we want to make it serializable, then TJ must read from transaction TI. Why should TJ read from a transaction which started before TI? Because if it has read from QK, QK has been written by some TM, uh, TM. Since W timestamp of QK is less than TSTI, QK has been written by a transaction TM. And TM is, uh, no, TS of TM is less than TSTI. Therefore, TM started before TI. And TJ has read QK. Therefore, the odd timestamp of QK is TJ. So, TJ has read the value written by TM. In between, TI wants to now write the value of TM. This leads to the concept of unserializability because we would normally have TM in, seri in a serial schedule, we would have it in this sequence. And whatever TM writes, TI will read. And whatever TI writes, TJ will read. But in this scenario, we will see that that is violated. So in this scenario, we will roll back, reject and roll back. So that is the protocol. If TI issues a write queue and this condition, TSTI is less than our timestamp of QK, then TI is rolled back. Else, a new version of queue is created. Whenever a write is allowed, a new version is created. And whenever a new version is created, it's our uh, W timestamp is made the whenever a new version is created, the W timestamp of that version will be the TSTI. And whenever a read is done, the R timestamp of QK will be updated to the largest timestamp of a transaction which read Q. And if we allow this protocol in a multi version scheme, we will have conflict serializability and we will see that we are minimizing rollbacks. How are we minimizing rollbacks? Because there is no failure on a read. And on a write, there is failure only in one condition. Previously, on write, we had a failure under two conditions. And in read, we had a failure under one condition. Now, <coughs> we will have a failure under only one condition. So we will minimize the number of rollbacks. But obviously, in a multi-version scheme, there is a additional overhead of maintaining all the versions, space and so many other problems will arise. But it does enhance concurrency when you want to do it on a small set of data. The problem of rolling back is quite serious because if a transaction TI is rolled back, then this transaction TI may have written data which has already been read by other transactions which have either completed or started. And suppose TI1 T I2, T I3 are transactions which have read data while which was written by TI. Let us take a more detailed example. Let us take a more detailed situation. Suppose TI does read a write a then read b. write b, <coughs> read c, write c. Now, the rollback of ti may occur at this position of write c. ti1 may have already re read the data written 
read the data A, I2 may have read the data B, I3 may have read the data A again. And if at this point Ti is rolled back, then T1, Ti1, Ti2, Ti3 will also have to be rolled back. And if Ti2, Ti1, Ti2, Ti3 may roll back, in a very similar situation, it will lead to rollback of <coughs> other processes. And you will, may end up in a situation in which you may have to roll back all transactions which started with whose TSTI value is greater than or equal to the TS value of this transaction TI. And in this situation, you will have cascading rollbacks which you would like to avoid as far as possible. By multiversion schemes, we reduce the number of rollbacks and we cannot have, but still, <coughs> we cannot, <coughs> sorry, mm, uh, eliminate rollbacks. <coughs> How do we do this here? A rollback situation, now let us look at concurrency along with uh, failure. This situation of rolling back will come in the similar fashion when you have concurrency with failure. Because when, suppose instead of TI being aborted due, uh, rolled back due to protocol problems, it may just be uh, rolled back due to failure. Suppose TI fails and if TI fails in the middle, then when there is concurrent execution, these transactions which have not failed will have to be rolled back because they are dependent. TI fails here. Then these will have to be rolled back. And once these are rolled back, all others will roll back. The problem of uh, uh, recovery from failure is very similar to this rolling back concept during concurrency, when both concurrency and failure occur together. For that, what uh, we can have is what is called a delayed write. It is similar to the deferred database modification scheme in which we delay our write. Now, in any transaction, a transaction reads and writes a data item only once. It is foolish to write a data item and read it after that because no transaction will write a data item and then read it. It is not expected because you already know what you have written. Therefore, we will in any transaction whenever we have got reads and writes, all the writes will be written down, the actual writes will be delayed in the sense that a transaction, any transaction T, in between it will have read read and suppose it has a write here, read A, read B, write A, read C, then write B and then say write C. <laughs> it does not matter if this write A is put back here at least for, from this transaction's point of view, the transaction is going to work perfectly well. Similarly, it does not matter if all the writes are done after the transaction commits, partially commits. So, we will use that similar concept of deferred database modification in which we will say the in a transaction we have what is called a read phase. all reads will be done first, the then execution phase. Or read and execution may go together. But before the write phase, we will have the protocol checking or the validation phase. <coughs> now what will happen here? A transaction will read all the data items. Another transaction can also read those data items, there is no problem. 
even if they occur one after another, you are reading, nobody has written it. All variables which are to be written are stored in the temporary variables because any read or write C corresponds to write C comma C. So this validation before actually writing onto the database, the protocol checking will be done. Can all the data be written? And if all the data can be written, then by some mechanism, all the items will be written by either locking or by a mechanism in which they are strictly serial in writing the data. So that you have got no rollback concept at all or you are going to minimize the rollback. There will be no rollback on any transaction up to this phase as long as this much occurs. Even if the transaction is aborted here by recovery due to by failure problems or this validation phase checks that this write cannot be written and this rollback needs to be done, then there is no cascading. You just restart this transaction. It is sufficient to restart only this one because you have not written anything into the database. You have only read something and done some intermediate computation. So before the write phase, if, if after this validation phase you see that your protocol is violated, your serializability cannot be maintained, you just do not write, you roll back. And this rollback is a non-cascading rollback up to here. Even if you abort due to failure, this is a non-cascading rollback. Because this, whatever you roll back, you have not written any item into the database. Nobody's data is dependent on you. And therefore, you can just restart this but transaction only. So by this sort of a delayed write mechanism, a lot of advantages can be achieved and the problem of uh, cascading rollbacks can be avoided both in pure concurrency as well as when concurrency occurs in a combination with failure. <coughs> Finally, we have seen only the read and the write operations in any database transaction other than the read and the write operations, we will also have the insert, delete and the update operations. And therefore, in any database, we will have not only the write, read, we will also have insert, delete and update. We are not bothered about transaction uh, operations which do not affect the database or the disk directly. But the insert, delete and the update operations will be there in any transaction. And all of these three will also modify the database. <clears throat> an update operation can be looked upon as a delete combined by an insert. Therefore, theoretically speaking, an update need not be seen on its own. Now we will see, suppose a transaction has all four of these, what are the protocols to be followed? They will logically follow from whatever we have done till now and therefore we will just quickly go through the transaction protocols, both the locking protocols as well as the time stamping protocols, when instead of only read and write in a transaction, we have insert as well as delete. <coughs> that is, the abstract form of a transaction after removing all the operations will have these four types of instructions. <coughs> so we consider four types of database operations, the read, the write, the insert and the delete operations. And now we will look at conflict serializability. We know that read conflicts with write, read does not conflict with read, write conflicts, now let us see does read conflict with insert, can we change read and insert, can we interchange read and insert, suppose we had read here and read q and insert q, sorry. We had insert queue, 
in one transaction and in another one transaction we had read queue. Can we interchange read queue with insert queue? We cannot. Therefore, read also conflicts with insert. Similarly, delete, read also conflicts with delete. Because if you had read followed by delete, you cannot just interchange delete with read. Therefore, write conflicts with both read and write and it obviously conflicts with insert and delete. And therefore, we will see that only read read does not conflict. Everything else conflicts. Delete conflicts with all of them, insert delete, read write. Insert conflicts with all of them, insert delete, read write. Write conflicts with all of them, insert delete, read write. You cannot just interchange them and read conflicts with these three. So based on this slightly generalized concept, we can have the same ideas of conflict serializability, have that conflict serializable graph and uh, have all the other uh, view serializability and everything we can have in a very similar manner. Now let us see the protocols. <coughs> we know the protocols for read and write. We will see quickly see the protocol for insert and delete. Two phase locking protocol. Since write, we must lock delete by exclusive lock. We cannot lock delete by shared lock. Because since delete conflicts with all of them, it is like write. We must lock it by an exclusive lock. So in two phase locking protocol, whenever you have a delete instruction, just like a write instruction, you will lock it by an exclusive lock. And in the time stamping protocol, suppose transaction TI issues delete queue. So TI issues delete queue. In that situation, you check if TSTI is less than R timestamp queue. If TSTI is less than R timestamp queue, then there is a process or there is a transaction which started after TI and has already read the value of Q. And if you are going to delete Q by transaction TI, then obviously there is going to be a conflict because somebody which started after it has already read that data. And if you delete it by TI, then the serializability will never be maintained. So you reject the delete and roll back. The condition TSTI less than W timestamp Q. That means that you are trying to delete Q by transaction TI and some other transaction which started after TI has written onto Q, which again is a case of a conflict and therefore again you reject and roll back. But the other cases where TSTI is greater than R timestamp Q or TSTI is greater than W timestamp Q, there is no problem, you can execute the delete instruction. And once you execute the delete instruction, there is no question of its R timestamp or its W timestamp. So in a very similar manner, you can have the timestamping protocol for the delete instruction. The protocol for insertion. The protocol for insertion, since insert conflicts with all of them, we have exclusive lock for insertion. And in the timestamping protocol, when you insert a new element, you update its R timestamp Q. And the W timestamp Q is set to TSTI if TI executes insert Q. So whenever you insert a new item and that item did not exist before, you just set its new R timestamp and its W timestamp. That is all you do and you set both the R timestamp and the W timestamp to TSTI. And insert will always succeed, there is no problem of uh, succeeding with insert. Because the data item does not exist till now, nobody else can even write that queue. You will just check whether the data item exists or does not exist. And similar to the multiple granularity scheme, you will have to lock the intention locks by the exclusive locks 
uh, or the shared and in, uh, exclusive law and in the multiversion scheme you will have to take care when you do insertion you will have to say create the first version of that data when you do an insert you will create the first version of that data and when you do a delete you will just remove that data so that is how you do you just remove the whole field in that multiversion scheme the update can be followed by can be done by a delete followed by an insert or you can have a new protocol for update itself instead of taking it as a delete followed by insert you can have a very similar protocol for update which I do not wish to do. So this is how uh, we have the various schemes for concurrency control and we will just quickly see what we have done in concurrency control. We have seen the serializability, we have seen locking protocols, avoidance of deadlock, we have seen time stamping protocols, we have seen multiple granularity schemes in which we enhance the concurrency similar in locking protocols. We enhance concurrency in time stamping protocols by multiversion scheme or by a validation or delayed write technique. We have also seen how we can incorporate insert, delete, read, write and all these components in a transaction. Finally, we have to look into the concept where concurrency go, goes in a combination with failure. There the whole concept of rollbacks plays a very important role. That is whenever a transaction fails or aborts that is a transaction TI during its execution if it fails then you will have to roll back all transactions which started after TI and used data written by TI so in such a situation we will not only have our delayed write scheme whenever we roll back we have to do our undo and redo operations again and we will have to do it not only for the transaction which is aborted but for all the dependent transactions which are there. For this you need a much more complex model of a transaction and a much more complex model of both the disk and the memory. Here the multiversion schemes, the mirrored concept all of them will come together to form what is called transaction processing. The transaction model the complete transaction model in terms of a concurrency situation. We will not discuss it in details in this course, but it will follow from all the ideas that we have done both the buffer management, the rolling back, the logging as well as delayed write and all of this will do uh, mirroring in which you write the same data in more than one place. All of them will come hand in hand together and a more complex transaction model will have to be determined. We will complete our study on concurrency control by this.